Some conflicts are just different. They, they grow and they spread and they make people miserable until they seem really impossible to solve. I mean, they can suck people in and, and take over their lives. This is the 5% problem. The nightly news is filled with stories about awful conflicts that go on and on and seem to never end. But one conflict that we haven't heard much about lately is the war in Mozambique, which is actually a great example of a country where the impossible happened. Peace suddenly broke out in the middle of a, of a never-ending war. They were a country that were at war for as long as most people could remember. There was an independence war against Portugal in the 1970s, and then immediately there was a 16-year civil war where over a million people died. It was one of the bloodiest ever. And although the road to peace in these situations is, of course, very complicated, there are some basic lessons that we can take from Mozambique that can help us to think differently and attempt to resolve other seemingly impossible conflicts. The first lesson is breaking through the wall. In almost all difficult conflicts, people's way of thinking and feeling can freeze into something like this. We're all good and they're evil. And this creates a huge wall between people that really just acts to fortify their hate. In Mozambique, this way of thinking allowed both sides, the government and the rebels, to justify committing some of the worst atrocities because they really believed strongly that the other side was evil and had to be defeated no matter what the cost. But sometimes, somehow, you see a, a crack form in this wall. And in Mozambique, it was something very small that did this. It was the courage of one man. Jaime Gonzalez was a Mozambican man who was a Catholic bishop and who had started meeting very quietly both with the government and the rebels. Now, these were extremely dangerous, illegal, secret meetings where Gonzalez could have easily been killed at any time. And even though similar types of attempts had happened in the past and had failed, somehow, for some reason, both sides came to trust this man. And this small thing had an extraordinary impact. Because both sides came to trust the bishop, it became harder and harder to keep believing that the other side was completely evil. I mean, this slight opening, this crack in the wall, allowed both groups to begin to imagine the impossible, peace. And although this change in perspective seemed sudden, in fact, it had been building up slowly over 16 years of war. See, psychologists tell us that when people ignore things that are right in front of their eyes, you know, like the fact that not all of your enemies are completely evil, that a sense of it can start to build up without us consciously realizing it. And then all of a sudden, bam, we see it. When an unconscious sense of something like this grows over time, it's what we call latent attractors or hidden attractors. And it's what we saw happen in Mozambique. Latent attractors for peace had been building slowly, even amidst the Civil War. I mean, people would see things about their enemies like, look, they have kids and they sing and they dance, but they would immediately put that out of their mind. And it wasn't until the bishop started to speak with the rebels and the government that these latent positive attractors were triggered. So during these meetings, peace suddenly felt possible. The lesson for resolving other intractable conflicts like this is to explore how these latent attractors for peace can be somehow cultivated intentionally. It's like planting seeds of peace and then helping them to grow even amidst war. So breaking through the frozen us versus them mentality is the first step, but it's never enough because it's very easy to get pulled right back into a destructive conflict, sometimes very quickly. In other words, there are old attractors for the violence and conflict that are still there and they're waiting to trap us. And this is the second lesson from Mozambique. To have lasting peace, the institutions and the attitudes that can lead us right back into violence have to be dismantled. In Mozambique, this began with people finding some way to forgive each other for the violence. But the dismantling also included other things, more technical things like putting constraints on the army and building a free press and even an effective justice system. But the point is that destructive conflicts can always suck us right back in. And to prevent this, we need to be aware of this and then to take concrete steps to avoid it. Mozambique taught us that peace is possible even in impossible situations. But we must first get beyond the us versus them mentality and then work actively to dismantle the things that lead us right back into violence. Remember, even in the middle of the worst kinds of conflicts, there is always a possibility, there's always hope. But 
By understanding the dynamics that drive us and keep us in destructive conflicts, we can learn to find our way out.